also because he has three freckles on each cheek. I'm not sure the date. It's not even the ninth. I think it's like, I don't know. It's like the 10th or something, but I am a little bit just disheveled, disheveled, is that how you said? I'm a little bit perplexed at the amount of suicides that have been occurring. Um, for what I understand, sui the suicide rates is up in the past two decades. Those of you in the States know that Kate Spade, the famous designer, mostly known for her purses and shoes, committed suicide a couple of days ago. And then I got online today and heard that Anthony Bourdain, Rion's chef, has committed suicide. I, being a kitchen cook, I am a huge fan of Anthony Bourdain. So to hear about that, I was like, what? I, I was expecting to hear maybe he passed away from cancer. He didn't tell anyone because he was a smoker. Uh, maybe it was a heart attack, but to hear that it was an actual um, suicide. Y'all, um, <laughs> but let, let me just tell you the ignorance that I see going around and especially in the black community because still mental illness is seen as something that's a white people a white person problem white people problem mental illness we don't do that you know we just need to pray about it absolutely baby i believe in prayer i'm an example of what prayer can do however people who are going through depression who are in depression that's the last thing they really want to hear um so I guess Anthony Bourdain, those of you who don't know, he was a chef. He had a, a show on CNN, um, but I was a fan way, way before the show on CNN. But the, the reason why I love that show is it, it brought together food and culture. You know, I see CNN and these other news outlets every now and then posting the suicide hotline. That's great and all absolutely provide the resources but i think that we as a people have a um responsibility like i've said in the past to check up on our friends to check up on our family members to ask people how they're doing to be that person be there for people um to be that support system support system to to be that comfort for someone I'm pretty sure these people hear it all the time and they've gotten to the point to where when someone asks them how they're doing, they have an automatic response. <sighs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, y'all. I know I'm rambling. I guess, long story short, we need to start checking up on our friends and family a lot more often. And just little kind gestures, just to call up someone. I think social media, like I said, have, has given people a false sense of closeness. Getting on Facebook, liking a post is not communication. Pick up the phone, call, even texting is no. And I, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty. Now, something that I will do, I'll text a girlfriend and say, hey, I'm going to call you in a couple of more days. So anyway, you guys, I just wanted to bring, I didn't want to, you know, be all negative. So today is my first day volunteering at church. Oh, girl, the girls are looking good, y'all. I need to, I need to get down some. Um. First time volunteering at church. I'm gonna be with JB's group, so we shall see how it goes. Now, I'm gonna kind of be in the dark, but y'all can see me. You can you can read my lips, girl. Today was the first time that I had volunteered for my church, and I am volunteering in JB's room, which is five and under, and it's called Kingdom Kids. And this is the these holes ain't loyal church. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, I had to sit down. So it was interesting, for lack of better words. And um, these are, a lot of them were inner city kids. Actually, it was a mix. It was a mix of different kids from different different socioeconomic statuses, different races, ethnicities, etc. But the thing that I immediately noticed were how the teachers were acting. And then there was different age ranges from mid-20s to early 50s. I was like, you can't be treating little kids like this. I mean, they were screaming at kids from across the 
room. And y'all, this is my thing. I yell at JB because JB is my child. I would not want someone treating my child the way that they were treating us children. And I'm pretty sure these people will treat their children the same way. Um, but when you are continuously screaming at other kids in front of, I don't know how many, 20 other small children, that's going to change the tone. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you continue yelling and yelling, 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 and it wasn't at all the kids, it was three or four that were really, they just weren't listening. Um, another thing is that at this age is not... Just from the literature I've read, because you guys, I've read a lot of um, modern day discipline stuff, and but I do have some old school, some old school methods too. Um, best believe that coming from Texas, girl. So it's not best at this age. Well, it's not recommended that you yell at a child at this age from like across the room. That's not gonna do anything for them. You have to walk over get down in their face and talk to their asses. That's what you do. You talk to them, you move them away from the situation, you talk to them. Distract, distract, distract. So they were yelling a lot. One of the little boys, I don't know which one it was, I could tell he hadn't had a bath in a few days. Um, some of the kids I could tell are probably being spanked a little bit too much, I can tell. Um, some of the kids are possibly on the spectrum um and one little boy in particular who was kind of getting attached to me i could tell that he already at three years old is exhibiting a lot of anger okay and if his if i don't know what type of home he's coming from but him and his brother were exhibiting a lot of vent up anger and yeah but anyway the first 15 20 minutes it was going over rules praying and just talking these are three and four years old three and four years old okay they had five rules up there where you had they you had to read and repeat them and i'm thinking to myself did anyone not look into early childhood development you cannot put words up on a board for three four and five years old and expect them to you read it and repeat it it will it will make more sense if you had pictorial images after that it was time for crafts and then snacks the crafts was a hot mess. Girl. The crafts was to take this circle cloud that had a Bible verse not on it, and then the kids were supposed to were supposed to super glue these three sticks on the back. Okay, cool. She didn't even go over with the kids. She just said, "This is what it's supposed to look like." Bless her heart. She's a, she was a sweet lady, but I'm like, these kids need some more instructions, and this is what it's supposed to look like. Glue it on here. Someone has to sit around with them and show them, right? So. She's going around, you know, helping them do it real quick. And I'm thinking, oh my God, with two glue sticks. You have a class of 10 kids and you only have, you have a limited, they had them, but she didn't have them out. Then she tells me, okay, we need to make sure that all their names are on the little cloud so that we'll know to hand, who to hand them out at the end of the day. And I'm thinking to myself, why couldn't we have, the, these are babies, they're three years old. They don't know, half of them don't know how to even spell their name. Why couldn't someone have done this? Another teacher could have been writing their names on this while that other helper was spending 15 minutes going over the class. Oh, in the car. We'll go get it, baby. We'll go get it, okay? The third group couldn't even go in and do the craft. So I'm like, oh my God. So yeah, I don't know y'all. I'm gonna give it one more chance. And maybe this is what those kids need because some of the bad kids, quote unquote, the most of all of the problem children were gravitating toward me. They wanted me to hold them. And I know it's because I, I'm new, a new teacher and it's a new face, but most of the ones that they kept yelling at kept coming to me. Um, I don't think they were trying to, they weren't trying to manipulate me. Cause you know, at this age, they can start at a young age girl. They weren't trying to manipulate me to do something or run away. They were just, I think they were just attracted to that different type of energy I was putting out. Um, yeah, it was too much yelling for me. Too much yelling. The kids were okay. It was the adults, the adults. Too much yelling at the kids without explaining to them what they were doing and why they were getting yelled at. That's what discipline is about. Trying to correct the behavior, not just barking orders. Y'all, I'll give it one more week. I will. So you guys, I'm making some tostados, homemade tostados that is, using some corn tortillas, frying them to their heart. I'm also making my, home, my own refried black beans. This is mm, a can of black beans, drained onion powder, garlic powder, taco seasoning, two slices of jalapenos. Going to blend that. And then in this skillet, I have some JD. In this skillet, I have some corn, 
um, red bell peppers. This is going to be vegetarian, clearly. Some, this is the order. The beans, um, tomato, no, no, beans, corn, cheese, tomatoes, jalapenos. I have some sour cream that I'm going to put on top when it's done. Y'all see me? Um, I'm going to show y'all some products here. And my hair ain't in the, ain't, ain't in, there we go, there we go, there we go. Um, <sighs> what was I going to say, y'all? I forgot what I was going to talk about. I mean, I know I'm going to talk about, but I forgot where I'm going to start. We low-key have an attitude problem this morning for a warning because it's Monday. Um, my husband's off all this week, and I heard him make an appointment for massage. Like... You really gonna make an appointment for a massage? I even went in there and was like, oh, so, so you made an appointment for a massage? I know he's thinking this helper is crazy as hell. What's well, so? <laughs> yeah, I have on this shirt again. I wore this shirt in my, it's clean. Now, don't be thinking I'm you know, wearing dirty stuff. What is this stuff up underneath here, y'all? And this, today has been a good, a good Monday. I got so much done today and I'm feeling really good about the rest of the week, the rest of the year, etc. Now, so this was going to say, so I am Facebook friends with a couple of other YouTubers, you guys. So one of them is Linda from, from, um, New Orleans. No, she's not from New Orleans. I'm sorry, sis. She's from Louisiana, but she's not from New Orleans. Um, she had posted a couple of days ago that a blog post, because she has a blog, and basically how she no longer do product reviews for free. And I'm like, yes, yes. Now, so I wrote back or responded to her post, and I was like, I need to remember to do this. And she responded, well, you know, go ahead and get you a, what did you say, sis? She said, you should go ahead and create you a social media kit. I already have one, girl. I'm just so damn lazy. I already have one. I created one a couple of years ago because Shari J had made a video, which I really do wish she would have kept with it. Both her and Yolanda Renee had these great videos on how to be a um, YouTuber and, con you know, content creator is what they call us now, YouTuber girl, on how to be a YouTuber and some things you should do. And because they, you know, have huge followings, I wish they would have kept up with those type of videos. But anyhow, I will be linking Shari J's video down on how to create a social media kit. But yes, I have one. So what I did yesterday was I made sure that I updated it. I mean, the one I had was I was at 10,000 subscribers. I'm almost at 16,000, amen. Um, and I also created a rate sheet on how much I would charge for shout outs for, which is like be on Instagram on my social media accounts. Um, reviews for blog posts and then reviews for um, <clears throat> for product reviews for my for my channel. Now, one thing that I don't charge because I just don't think that I'm at that level, and it's something that I like to do is writing articles. And I the last time I wrote an article was two years ago for Natural Happy Hair Magazine, based out of out of Dallas, I believe they are. But I've written for you know Natural. I've written for several magazines, y'all. Um, I don't, you know, brag about it on my channel or anything. I think I've only mentioned it once or twice. This is possibly the third time. But I have written articles for magazines and for blogs and all that. And um, yeah, I was very, I'm very surprised when someone reaches out to me for that because I don't think I'm a great writer. This is free marketing. And now this is going to be the downfall of charging is that, <clears throat> excuse me, these companies are going to be able to find someone else who's not either not going to charge them at all or who's going to charge them lower. And I'm okay with that because this is about my worth and my time. You have no idea. I'm just going to name them because I don't care at this point. TGIN, Jane Carter, oh, Cream of Nature, Nunat. These are all companies that have sent me products and I literally have reviewed for free. Design Essentials. Um, hell, I could look at the back. At least, I would say at least half a dozen top brands out there. So, I guess my point is, is that they took my reviews and put them on their channel, on their website. So, that's like free marketing, free advertising. You know, I got a couple of subscribers from those reviews. But still, I guess my point is, you know, especially if you're new at this, um, know your self-worth. I, I charge now. Hell, I even charge my cousin. They wanted me to... <laughs> oh. I didn't, let me get back. Let me bring it back. Bring it back again. 
focus focus um i was watching a young lady and i can't remember her name but it begins with a b brini brenna anyway she's based out of london she lives in london but the title of the video was influencers are broke something like that along the along the terms and this was a you know um fresh a breath of fresh air from her perspective she was basically talking about excuse the noise the truck going by basically seeing how as a youtuber she's not making any money but then it brought in a different a different layer or another perspective because apparently there's certain videos for the you know youtubers who are overseas there are certain videos that they have that may not be monetized in other countries so they may not make as much money as say someone who lives in the u.s or one who lives in you know wisconsin maybe making more money on their videos so but to the girl's point if you want to do haul videos you have to go buy clothes you know unless you use clothes in your closet that no one had seen you before if you want to go do a dollar tree haul well your ass got to go to the dollar tree and buy that stuff so it takes money this is why you know when it comes to being a youtuber you can't come on here with a mindset of i'm gonna make money if you are you have to treat it like a business it takes money to make money you have to have lights cameras um, a good background clearly i don't have one right now so i think so many people still get on here thinking that they can make money Another thing she was saying how, you know, people assume that she's bawling and all this because of the stuff she posts on on her social media. It's just that I live with my mama. I live in London. London is very, London is possibly, is it the most expensive city? So I'm in my office and I want to show you guys what I have been doing. Uh, those of you who don't know, I do, I call it, well, it's supplemental homeschooling with JB. We are not full time. Um... And I doubt if I ever will be just because, um, yeah, it ain't happening around here. But I do supplement at home. And, well, I found a great school for JB. I, I absolutely love this school. I know plenty of people who, go to, who attend this school. But I have a lot of material at home that I've been starting to collect since my child was honestly one years old. Hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm working too just this right here alone is some of the workbooks that i have now i purchased these workbooks primarily through um the dollar store don't sleep on the dollar tree excuse me dollar tree yeah dollar tree um what the dollar store they're used interchangeable so what i did is i wanted to have a um i created a curriculum for jb i created a seven week curriculum and we have uh divided things by days tuesdays and thursday and we have reading, writing, math, science, slash geography, music, and art. Um, and then on Fridays, depending on, we have social studies. I know. <laughs> They're like, how old is your child? He five. He five. But you got to start soon. So, yeah, I created a eight-week, seven-week curriculum. Um, it, it's I try to do as much African-centered as possible. Y'all, it is hard. It is really sad that parents who want to have an African-centered curriculum have to either make they make their own or scramble to find some resources. There are a couple of people who have, who have created some curriculums like that, but there are less than 10. Whereas you can find hundreds of other types of curriculums. Of them. But anyway, I created my own. So I'm just gonna give a little rough, I know y'all can't see that, of what we do on a weekly basis. Again, it's Tuesday, Thursdays, and Friday. Um, He's, since he's five years old, sometimes we don't go over everything in one sitting. I mean, whatever we don't do, I move over to the next week. Or if I see he's struggling with something, like right now, he's struggling with, if I tell him to write a number three, he can't remember what it looks like. So he struggles with that. So um, one of the things we'll be doing this week is practicing writing one to 10. And he knows how to write it once he sees it, but we're gonna be practicing that. So anyway, we start our, our day off with a Bible verse. Um, most of the time it is has to do with education, learning, knowledge. And then we also started with an African proverb. Okay, and then for example, for tomorrow, we will be um, reading a poem from this book that I got from the library, A Full Moon is Rising. I try to get as many books that have brown people because representation matters okay i literally go through and if i see someone that looks um you know mariah carey and darker i get it <laughs> he's clearly going to be reading tons of book 
books that are you know uh, full of different type of people but I purposely try to find as many books with brown children on the front because y'all we like I said before we live in an area where he doesn't even see a lot of black children so to see that in books to see himself represented in those books I think that's important so anyway we're gonna be reading a book we're gonna be doing sight words now when he was at school he had his own sight words or a list of sight words that they had I should say they had two lists oh mama created some own so I have a list three here and a list four then based on those sight words I created uh, flashcards and then taking it another step further hold on another step further we may read and these are from the Dollar Tree books that have those same sight words so again reiterating and I think that repetition would help him to remember that and he's doing really good um, we have a collection of Bob's books that I have somewhere over here so as far as music and art, music and art will be mostly African centered. So right now we are in West Africa. Um, I'll probably bring him, bring up instruments, pictures of instruments. Uh, we'll listen to different type of music from Nigeria, from Mali, just from different countries. And again, West Africa will, you know, possibly bring up, you know, famous artists, famous musicians. So, but then I also want to introduce him to a different genre of music every week. So last week was classical music, listening to Mozart, listening to Bach. This week is rock and roll. But that's where it started from, right? So introducing him to some classic artists like um, Elvis, which is also Chuck Berry. <laughs> uh, Chuck Berry, what is his name? Um, Little Richard. I will, baby. I will take care of Oh, you. hello. Warm, baby. Really, y'all. My eczema has gotten out of control. So about a year ago, I was getting this small little patch about, and it was round. I'm thinking, of course, me being extra, I'm like, oh Lord, I got the ringworms. Girl, if you don't calm down, it was eczema. So if you know, you can never get rid of eczema. There's no cure for it. And with asthma and allergies, it all it all ties in. So every now and then it'll go away, it'll come back, it'll go away and come back. Ironically, doing my surgery, it completely Hi. hold on, baby. Doing my, okay. <laughs> doing my surgery and shortly afterwards. I came back from school today. Yeah. Doing my surgery and shortly afterwards, it completely went away. But the last week and a half. It has been the worst it has ever been. I have tried everything. So anyway, y'all, like I said, I've tried all my DIY. He has an eczema cream that I literally been lathering on. Butt wraps, which is what I typically use on him when it's really it's bad. I know, baby. I've tried Vaseline wet wraps. I've tried Vaseline. That's no, it's not. I mean, everything, and it's still no relief. So one, I made. I went ahead and made an appointment with a dermatologist. Okay. For Monday and two, I'm doing an apple cider vinegar slash mud, and this is the best it's felt all week. Um, and I'm just gonna start. I had stopped taking my probiotics three a day three days ago, so I need to get back on it. I have to treat this internally because at this point, I don't know if it's stress related that's making it flare up like this. And it has been very hot here in Phoenix too, three to three degree weather. This is just and it's starting to crack and bleed. And yeah, I know you're not supposed to itch it, but it, it itches so bad. I've tried every, I'm gonna pray over it. I'm gonna lay, I'm not playing. I'm gonna lay hands on my, on my eczema. You watch and see.